Being in the room where it happens is the famous line from Alexander Hamilton. For the last decade of British politics, this man has always been in the room. I had free reign of number 10. He has photographed four of our prime ministers. Because obviously you had Cameron, May, then Boris. And who can forget Liz Truss. Even when the most senior advisers leave the room for calls with US presidents, there remains one man standing and capturing the moment for history. But Obama is very cool. He went into the White House, he's very friendly. This is Andy Parsons, the country's most famous photographer, trusted by the great and the good. But the word photographer probably doesn't really capture the job of what Andy does. You get that sort of little sense, you think, I've got to stick around, something's not right. He's capturing history in real time and quite literally needs to be able to read a room and blend into the background. In some ways, you are two or three seconds ahead of everyone else in a room. But ultimately, how do you make pictures of politics interesting? What are you looking for? How do you take an iconic photo? We sat down with Andy to go through a dozen of his favourite photos of the last decade of working at the top of British society. So, worked for, personally for four prime ministers, the Queen Mother's funeral, the Queen's funeral, royal weddings, mm. royal births. In some ways, he's had an all-access pass to the major events of the 21st century. I'm Andrew Parsons and you're watching Jimmy's Jobs of the Future. Andy, welcome to Jimmy's Jobs of the Future. Jimmy, good to be here. <laughs> what wonderful. a journey, eh? I mean, as I was saying earlier, I remember you with your skateboard and everything. You know, I had my little film camera. Cool, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the early noughties. And your old man coming in. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it was, it definitely was. Yeah, I remember it well, I remember. And, and here we are. And here it's we funny are. Funny old game, really. <laughs> what, a, what a circle. That would be the attic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me in charge now of cameras. Come to the yeah. <laughs> it's a bit late to pray, I guess, but still. <laughs> um, but I was thinking back to our first, uh, well, and so you think about when we started out, all of that, or when I started out, rather. But then in 2019, we were both behind the black door for when Boris Johnson became Prime Minister. And it was kind of a, it was an iconic moment, always a new Prime Minister coming in is. But I remember him giving this speech. And I've been there for Theresa May as well, giving that opening speech. And it's always a big kind of moment. But Boris was going on quite a bit. And you leant across me behind the black door and said, I'm going to have to get my night vision camera out in a minute. <laughs> this goes on any longer. It was a bit like uh, something about candles, wasn't it? We're going to need some candles. Yeah, we're going to need like some that. candles or something. Right. Give us four, four candles or something. It was some joke about that. Um, but, but how do you, how do you kind of... I guess one of the kind of questions that I wanted to ask was like, what's the... The how do you keep your composure and how do you kind of get ready for those shots? Because that's, I mean, that's yeah. not just all day building up to that shot, right? That is all, um, I mean, it's a lifetime's work. It is. And I would have done, well, I'd had a few practice runs before Boris because obviously I had Cameron, May, uh, Cameron twice actually, May, then Boris. Um, and you're right, with that, without getting too technical, um, it, that specific shot is a tricky one because um, you've got the new Prime Minister coming in from daylight into the darkness because of number 10's not very well lit. Mm. So everything's got to be right. Literally, technically-wise, you've got to be bang on. And you usually only get... Um, it, you know, It's almost like you're back on the days of the rolls of film where you've only got about three or four shots. Right. Because of the way that the light mixes in and the way the things are, so we we all tend to make it uh, look a bit easy. But it's one of those shots that uh, can go incredibly wrong. You don't know where or what direction. I mean, you know he's going to come through the door, but you don't know after that what direction or what's going to happen. Usually, the cab sec meets them, but you don't know if they're going to come in and block you and stuff. There's a lot of elements to yeah. it that just has got sort of um, possible disaster into it. As it has, to be honest, with a lot of the type of photography that I do, because. I'm not in control of it. Yeah. So like, I'm not a portrait photographer with with the with the subject in front of me on a chair, and and I can direct them to look left, right, stand up, etc. Or an architectural photographer, the building is not going to move. You know, with what I do, it is a fast moving pace. I I tr you try and second guess. Yeah. But there's only so much of that you can do. Um, I mean, that, that it's exactly there's there's a typical example of that actually that 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 you might show is that. Um, 
on the night that Cameron got in in 2010. Obviously, he had the cabinet reshuffle, as they, as the prime minister does. As soon as they get in, they have a cabinet reshuffle, um, and I would go in at the top of the the, the uh, into the top of the cabinet room where the table is, and then the the, the minister would sit opposite the, the prime minister, and they would be appointed to X, Y, and Z. Um, and we'd got to a stage where actually. Um, he'd forgotten to appoint your dad as chief. <laughs> so your dad went round and he wanted to sit opposite and Cameron's like, no, 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 you can just do it here. So you, And that made a funny picture. Yeah. And you just don't know, I didn't know that was going to happen. It's just that Cameron uh, and, your, and, your, and your dad, Patrick, had such a good relationship that it, 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 it was a relaxed type of uh, atmosphere. Of course, yeah. But at that, that moment in time, you get a bit of a, a sense of what's going on or your dad's moving and you think, why is it, hold on, hold on, he's going to go around and then you move. It's, it's a bit like... Um, in some ways, it's a bit like you're, all, you know, like on a sports field or something like that. You're just trying to sort of second guess the the, the opposite players and work oh, out where it. they're going to go. That's how I try and see it. It's like, right, what they're doing, where they're going to go, what's what's that all about? There is space over there, you know, and you try and you, you. In some ways, you are two or three seconds ahead of everyone else in a room. Yeah, and you're thinking, right, okay, or you look for new additions. Um, in one of the pitches. Uh, there's Liz Truss is um, when she was Prime Minister she's being briefed by a group of people in her office in the House of Commons on the day that um, on the day that the Queen died mm. now she was in the chamber and all of a sudden people like the Cabinet Secretary started arriving CDL started arriving and I'd been photographing her before because she was getting ready for the energy statement yeah and then I saw it was the, only a second day of the job exactly whatever. yeah I thought, yeah wasn't Eighth or so, I think it was that. Yeah, and um, anyway, these these people started arriving, and because I've been in that room so many times, the House of Commons room, and there I very rarely see the cabinet secretary. I was like, oh right, Somebody. what's what's going on? You know, what's happening here? And that's when you get that sort of little sense. You think I got to stick around. Something's something's not right. Yeah, and I, and then as the picture proved later on, uh, the rest of the team start arriving. And that's um, the Prime Minister being briefed on the situation um, that the Queen was deteriorating on, on that day. And then or, or, and a few hours later, the news was announced that... So you, you sort of... You're playing quite a lot of mind games, really. Yeah. Because um, you don't really get many instructions, do you, in terms of, like, no. what to do? We, you're just kind of trusted with it. Yeah. Briefing-wise, n- not, not so much at all. Because um, people probably think you get a big sort of, oh, this is what we're really looking for, yeah. this image today. But that's not it. It's right? quite a common question if I give talks is is like, what, well, you must be going to a brief in the morning and they say, we want to produce this image by the end of the day. And most people, are, even in, whether it's in the comms world or the photography world, are very, very surprised that um, I go, no, I have a blank canvas. Yeah. So I go in, at, in, in down the street days, we used to go in, you know, half eight, nine o'clock for the first meetings. Totally blank. I mean, you'd have your standard diary jobs, though, like the cabinet on a Tuesday, uh, yeah. PMQs on a Wednesday, various constituency days on Fridays and stuff. So you'd have your solid days, but you wouldn't know. I always say it's like our job, especially in there or, or on the other side of, of things that I do, um, I'm going on to my royal photography, that um, it's like fishing. You, you, got, you Sometimes you'll sit there for ages, but you don't know what you're going to catch. And you don't know what's going to unfold, you know. You, you don't know what you, what's going to happen by the end of the day. And my time in politics, you never did. Especially yeah. with, obviously, what happened in um, 2022 with Boris and stuff like that. I mean, every day was was completely different. Just, do you want to put the tissue down, by the way? Oh, sorry, Chad. No, it's all right. <laughs> I could just see he's getting comments on YouTube. Why do pictures need to be taken of every cabinet? meeting because that's always something that I imagine people think is like oh well why obviously when new cabinet's appointed but why to why are you there every week well to start with um it never used to be like that because there wasn't a photographer in there until I went in there so it's just something that I set um so there wasn't a photographer in number 10 at all uh, and then when uh, when when I went back in and, and set up an office in there um department photographers um, I made it a principle that we did every cabinet meeting every week simply because um, who knows what was discussed in that cabinet thing. So don't forget, you're doing this for the National Archives. This isn't just for social media. Yeah. So this could be, you know, th- there were various cabinets, especially around the Ukraine time, where the Chief of Defence staff would have been, was in there briefing the, with the cabinet. I mean, that's wartime stuff, you know, yeah. that you needed to be in there and document it. 
you didn't always know who was going to necessarily be in and out of the cabinet, outside of the cabinet members. And it goes into the National Archives. It's important weekly cabinet. Uh, and it therefore, it's part of, of our government and it should be um, documented. And you don't, you don't necessarily stay in for the whole lot, depending on how busy it is, actually, or whatever the subjects are of the week that are going on. But if it transpires that an hour or two later on, oh, in cabinet this morning it was discussed that this has happened around the world or this has happened or cabinet have made a decision on x y and z you you need some photographic evidence in time to come you know yeah yeah we've got that that was the cabinet meeting where they decided about the ukraine and russia situation etc etc or covid um, and especially when covid was on we would do all the covid meetings and all of the cabinet meetings because Unfortunately for everyone uh, in the country, the situation was getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. So to do that, um, you needed to, you needed, you needed documentation of it. It's not just photography you're doing, you are documenting history. Yeah. That's the thing. You have to take the camera element of it away. You are documenting history and, it, and, it, and it's a valued document to have because once you have it, no one can take it away. It's there. Yeah. And um, as the National Archives often said to me that photography was the most sort of um, more recent time of writing document, writing letters and stuff, because mm -hmm. no one writes letters anymore. But you, you photographing in number 10, everything, pretty much everything that was going on. And you, and you aren't really told that to leave the room often, right? It was a handful of times? No, so I, it's... yeah. I, I reckon I would have thought about, yeah, on one hand you could count. I was very lucky. I, was, I had free reign of number 10. And you had to respect that as well, though. Yeah. To do that, you had to read the room, when to go in, when not to go in, or uh, or when you know, prime ministers still have private lives, and you you know they might be on a call to the X, yeah, Y, yeah. and Z, and you like and you get a sense of that. And don't get me wrong, I've walked in uh, to, uh, to the prime minister's office a few times where they're on private calls, and you're like, whoop, yeah, time <laughs> to leave. Um, and you wouldn't go we in when the queen when to the prime minister's. I was therefore under the queen. Um, you wouldn't go in. When the Queen call was made, I was allowed. I was I was allowed once to yeah. do it, and I was. The, I think I, I think I'm the only one that's ever witnessed the call either end. So you know, because yeah, it yeah. was during COVID, and um, uh, Prime Minister Boris. So it was Boris at the time, um, and uh, the Queen. They had their call on a Wednesday night during COVID. Everyone was in lockdown, I believe. Um, I can't specifically remember the date, but Buckingham Palace and us photographed. Uh, our our uh, respective uh, uh, bosses, as it were, and uh, Buckingham Palace put a picture out of the Queen on the phone, and we put a picture out of um, the Prime Minister on the phone, and that's the only time that I've ever done it. But you are there also for some intense personal moments, you know, various resignation, less yeah. than like when when they're you know, because you're capturing those moments of history as well, and it's it's amazing. Even you know, I've shown some of the team the pictures beforehand you can you can sense the mood in those pictures beforehand right yeah um and as i said before um i was very very lucky that one um boris was very good to me um as, as were the others but i i think uh as time had gone on in number 10 they were more used to it so boris's time in number 10 i had more flexibility probably than when yeah. i first went in 2010 it was all very new to the staff of number 10 yeah. Uh, so as years have gone on, and images have got more and more sort of, you know, photography's got more and more apparent to everyone really, um, and people have started to relax. And my face obviously got uh, a little bit older around the place, and people were like, don't worry about him, it's just Parsons. It, it was all right, sort of thing. That um, uh, it, it, I was, I, I sort of gained people's trust, and but but you had to be professional as well, you know, and and and. and of course, but how did you build trust with those politicians? Because it's quite hard, right? Because senior level politicians don't really sort of have a time to go for a drink and whatever, right? So how did you build that relationship? With uh, those well, people? the only currency I had, Jimmy, was um, giving them pictures. Yeah, I would always, I was um, whatever way do you want to describe it, but um, butter them up a little bit, you know, give them some pictures. Yeah, it very it, it first started actually in 2010, going back to that reshuffle. So obviously the prime minister comes through the door, um, 
and um, they, they, I remember Cameron holding on to his head, like couldn't believe he got into the into the cabinet room. There's a picture of him holding his head. He's like, Phew, we made it, sort of thing, because yeah. obviously we did the coalition talks and all that sort of stuff. And then the cabinet reshuffle starts. As I said, we stand at the top of the table. They're appointed. They they say their hellos. How are you? What you've been up to? Great, congratulations, Prime Minister. I do. They don't look at me. This is just them having a chat like you and I yeah. are now. I do a couple of that, and then I leave. So I don't sit there for you know what, what we yeah, want yeah. you to do, what we don't want you to do, the, the arguments, all the agreements, sort of thing. And then, so that was the first sort of little breakthrough, really, of getting into the cabinet room. Um, and and then I would, I would, we didn't have WhatsApp then. You'd sort of email them out or give them out to them and things like that. And they started. Oh, thanks, thanks. You know, I dread to think how many Lou Walls I sort of cover with <laughs> pictures that I've handed out over the years. See you know, like, like I've yet to visit someone. Like, oh, I took that. Yeah, 20, 2012. Yeah, I yeah. remember that, you know. But, um, uh, and it's surprising, actually, towards the end of my time in number 10, obviously we had WhatsApp then, so I'd WhatsApp them pictures. I'd get a few a few cabinet members, oh, you never sent me that picture, or, you know, of me being this, that, or the other. And, um and it was it was really nice because it, it was such a turnaround from where we'd come from in 2010, where it was all a bit alien and whoa 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 what's the photographer doing in here sort of thing, to a point where now, it's taken that's it for granted. So when I left number ten, the department stayed there and the civil servant photographer stayed there. Yeah, um, and that's great. And the the picture has become so important, kind of in politics and communication. I mean, it's it's always been important, but. It now, it's just taken on to a whole new level with Instagram, TikTok, and all this. And okay, fine, some of it's short-term video, but often they're pictures spliced together a little bit. What would your kind of advice be as the parties are thinking about the next election next year? You know, because there's all this stuff like the light and things that you, you've got to take into account, right? So what and would... things, yeah, Jimmy. It's those things that are like real tricky for us. So because the light you... and things. The light is that, is that a photography technical, description. Technical uh, yeah, I'll write that down. I'll put that in the manual <laughs> the of the next of the next. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's true. But that's like, why we do it, you see. I, I, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but like when I started out on the Ops and Events team, right? Like you could have all these tens of hours, dozens of hours being poured into thought about policy papers and the communications and how it was all going to be framed. You know, one daft picture on a day could ruin the day derail a general election campaign for a day you're very right you're very yeah it's very very correct and there's other other pictures i've seen that if that picture had been taken under a, a political um banner or a political subject it would ruin their campaign I'm, yeah. I'm talking out of politics it would ruin their campaign and it would have been game over yeah uh, and, and that is the problem when when you are working for prime ministers future prime ministers um Look at the picture of the standard of use today of Susan Hall winning the Conservative nomination for London Mayor or two. Have you seen it? Oh, I've got to confess. No, I haven't seen it. Well, got it? well, it's, it's, it's um, yeah, I'll bring it up on, um, I'll bring it up on my it, phone. Um, to be honest, I'm so slow. She's won, is she? Yeah, she's, she's won. We are recording this only an hour later. But I tell you, it just, but this, this for me will define. And you have to be very careful because. It's a make or break situation. And the buck stops at the photographer. Okay? I took the picture, I would have submitted it to into the in, into the various That's yeah, that's uh, that's the picture the standard of use. Yeah. All right? That's yeah. gonna that is gonna define a there you are. Have a better look at it. But it just I think it shows the importance of Yeah. You know, if I'm honest, that's not done a huge amount of favours, is it? No. Um and and that's just yeah, I and mean, that's just the management side of things, you know. Um, but it's in, but it's in, but you know because you're right though that it ends up being the last thing that people think of, but the first thing they need. Yeah, yeah. So and to a degree now where um, the power of an image is more important now than it ever has been. So so for me, I'd be on the road um, probably eighty percent of the time in number ten, out on visits or foreign trips or whatever, uh, and we were constantly sending pictures back via our cameras. So yeah. we, we don't sit down on laptops anymore. Um, obviously, days of film are gone, and it will be sent back to an editor, and the editor will be working on it. When I say working on it, it's very, very bare minimum. It's, I, we had a rule that you only could do what you could do in the dark room. So lightning, darkening, make it, you know, maybe putting a bit of um, sharpener in it and stuff like that. You didn't move things. You didn't change things. 
you literally just did the colours and the sharpening. So it was moved and it was moved quickly. Uh, and to do that, so that's though, the rules that editors would because that's also an editorial move. editor. Yeah. 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 Okay. So newspaper editors or, or for us to put it out onto the yeah. channels, it's got to be as, as real as it possibly can be. You can't start fiddling around with things, taking things out or hiding, you know, things coming out of their heads by pure accident, you know, light bulbs. Yeah, yeah. Shows, no, no, know. but it's quite, that's quite interesting because obviously another part of the next selection, sorry, we're going to go off on a tangent now, but it's all this AI generated imagery and so on. Yeah, right? I was literally going to add that in because I was going to say that... Um, I think photography now is more important than it ever has been. And going into that election, yeah. there is going to be, like you say, a lot of AI. And also, um, they, the people that are using the images, whether that's editorial, magazines, newspapers, um, the Flickr sites or, or leaflets for the, for the specific um, campaign, have got to know the original source. And it's got to be, you know, the, the right original source. It has yeah. got to be 100%. That is our original picture. Yeah. You can't have a picture that you sort of grabbed off the internet of the subject that you think, oh, I quite like that. We'll use that. But you find out later down the line, well, actually, it's all been done via AI and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. By having a photographer, you know, like myself or whoever, they can definitely say that is the source. Yeah. There is the original. We keep everything. We don't throw anything away. That's that's the original picture that I took, and there it is. So you have proof of the chain and the and the background of it, the history of that picture. Yeah. And that's going to be so important. Yeah. To start changing the images around, you then start going into the propaganda, even more than people think you're already in propaganda. Yeah. You are now going to go even <laughs> deeper into sort yeah, of really. North Korea style. But that's it, it is interesting that there is you can lighten and darken, but that's basically. Well, there's no given rule, but that's the rule I set in yeah. number 10, you know, but then I trained on film, so that's all you could do. Yeah. So it, it, well, there wasn't anything else to do, you know. The, we, when we first used film, you, you couldn't afford to mess around. And also I trained on newspapers where you didn't have time to mess around, you know. Yeah. When we were on film and I was working at the Times, you'd have a biker waiting for you and it would rush back to the dark room. And if you were doing a job in London, say for the mayor today, it was this morning, but say it was if it was an evening um, shoot tonight and they announced it at five o'clock, you'd have a biker waiting for you, you'd give him the film and he'd zoom it back to Wapping, yeah. get it into the dark room, you'd make your way back or you'd phone through to the picture editor, frame maybe 22 might be all right. He'd look at frame 22 and then, then the mechanism would start working, they'd start printing and stuff and you might get back to the office in time to see it. Yeah. So you didn't have time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, yeah. That, was, that was your target, was take it, get it onto the messenger and away it went. And then eventually, if the job was this morning, you'd drive back to the dark rooms and say, well, that's, that looks all right, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and in some ways now, by I have an editor all the time now. So I have a guy that works for me just, just editing stuff live from whether I'm doing, um, you know, whether it's from, from my royal photography or, or political photography or whatever. Even if I'm doing an, av I do quite a bit of advertising photography, he'll still edit for me. So that's quite an interesting job then, isn't it, right? So that's, yeah, so that's the just an editor that kind of sits at yeah. home that you're sending stuff back yeah. to and whatever. He used to shoot for me and now he's decided he wants to edit. He's been around with me for years. But you need that person. Um, to, one, to get it right. Two, you've got a second pair of eyes on it. Yeah. Like today, for example, is a classic example. The number 10, I put some pictures out of, um, via CTHQ, whatever, of, of documents that aren't blurred. Yeah, I mean, they literally have just, you know, left the goal wide open and it's gone and it's stated on the documents just what they what their true feelings are about the uh, by-elections on Thursday night. You can't afford that. You can't yeah. afford that to happen. Now, that photographer can blame anyone else, but you can't. You took the picture. Yeah. You knew the documents were in front of you. That's the way it... it that is as cutthroat as it is. You know, a, a picture, as we said earlier on, a picture can make or break. You can write a wrong press release and maybe put a few... Um, different figures in it and stuff like that. And I'm not um, belittling that, but you say to someone in two years' time, oh, do you remember that press release? It, had a, it was about 2,000 figures, you know, out. No, I don't quite remember. Oh, do you remember that picture that I took in the cabinet yeah, room yeah. on the eve of the um, by-elections? And they left their sort of their true feelings out to show everyone, and the opposition therefore went, right, well, that's what the, that's what the Conservative government really think. They're I, going to remember that. They're not going to remember, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. I always give the example of Theresa May's trip to Africa. No one can remember any of the 
major policy announcements that were done on that trip, but everyone can remember the dancing. Don't right? like Tasty, yeah. uh, which I actually think was quite good. But that's a story oh, for yeah. <laughs> to the point where she continued it at a conference to yeah. talk yeah, about. Yeah, to, exactly. I remember that. I didn't remember covering that conference <laughs> to a great surprise. You know, I thought at first it was yeah, a trick so, uh, when they played Abra. I thought they all wanted us to dance, and then she came on dancing. I thought, oh, here we go. I, it was a surprise to us as well. Well, the music wasn't a surprise. We knew the music was going to do it. Then as she walked out, she decided. But to do you it. say that right, and that's very interesting because people have asked me about this about Theresa May over the last few months. You never knew with Theresa May how yeah. it was going to go, because there was a lot of times where you would you would photograph her as I did, like in 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 her office or on the planes and stuff like that. And then she would just turn and break out in laughter or speak to someone that she'd seen. Yeah. There would be this outburst of laughter with that person that she knew or connected to. And, and, she, rela- and she dropped. She relaxed. And, and you, could, you could see this different side. That was, but it was so rare. Yeah. I'm not saying that's a, good, a bad thing on her personality. I'm just saying she did have that. But she people did didn't that. see it. But didn't see it. No, I think that's true, right? Yeah. Um, and it's... Uh, I mean, I know that's what, something you've been asked a lot about, is like, who is the best kind of person to uh, photograph and so on. Um, but, yeah, Theresa May did have those kind of moments where she was able to sort of do that. And it... Um, yeah, it's... It must be... Inter- what, what makes for a, a good political photograph? Um... Well, it's various of things. It's various of things. Depends on what sort of mode, and I say mode, in whether you're in campaign mode, or whether you know whether it, you're in serious. That you know they've just done a trade deal mode, or um, I always think the campaigning ones uh, are the best types when you go out and meet the people, um, simply because you'll often find most politicians relax then. Yeah. When I say most, like uh, obviously Cameron, Boris, Rishi were very good at it. Um, I, I swear I didn't do a huge amount of campaigning with with Liz or with Theresa, um, and the bits and pieces I I did do, uh, nothing springs to mind. Um, Cameron was 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 good at it, breaking those people down, yeah, and and making them feel relaxed. And a lot of them used to sort of they they often, some say oh you know. Um, or you look different to the telly, you look thinner or something like that. They would often say things like that yeah. and, you know, just weird things like that. But I think they're harder to, to seek out. Um, I think the thing is working in number 10, it's a fantastic building. It is a great building. But at the end of the day, it's still your office. Mm. And you've still got to go in there day in, day out, day in and try and produce different views, different things of the same thing that you did yesterday or you did at last week's cabinet or you did the week before. As obviously with campaigning, you have no control over it and you don't know what's around the corner or what type of person's around the corner or what's going to happen. Um, and and it goes without saying, Boris was the best at it. It, it generally was. I mean, um, uh, and I don't even need me to tell you that. I mean, everyone yeah. will say that. Um, and, and now after sort of slightly sort of stepping back from a little bit of the politics side of things, it, 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 you really do realise just that 110, 120 miles an hour you were going with <laughs> all of that. All of us, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and he never used to say no to anything. Uh, I can remember various times of people coming into our, our office downstairs going, oh, by the way, you're going to Rome tomorrow. And like, oh, right. Oh, when did that happen? Oh, about half an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's like as if we were going to, as if we were just <laughs> living to Brighton or something. <laughs> Okay, all right, okay, um, we'll you know, or like Macron won't see us, or oh, yes, he will, sort of thing, here we go, and there's all these rumours that build, let's well, just go to, go to see Paris, yeah. yeah, let's go and <laughs> see Macron, he'll see us, sort of thing. So there was a lot of that. Or, uh, you know, Who was your favourite leader to take photos, a foreign leader to take um, photos? Of? I would say, and I've said this many times, actually, uh, it's a good question, Jim, the French in general are good, That's but true. Macron, and I said this about when the king went over... Um, well, he didn't go, but prior to when he was he was going to go before, um, he went to Germany, obviously. And I said to the, a couple of the royal guys there, watch Macron, because we'd always go into a room with, with Macron, and it, within seconds he would own it. Yeah. And I said to Boris a few times, um, I said, don't let him own it this time. Get in there, hands, start moving, start you know doing things like that. Because what Macron does, he comes up and he goes up to you and he gets your arms and he's tapping you, he's holding your hands. Or he's he's taking charge of that room. 
It doesn't matter if it's your bilat room or his bilat room. He'll do it. He's like, you know, he's touching you. He's like, hands or anything. Hey, how are you? His arms around you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the photographers are in there, um, because what would happen is you'd have the officials in there. So me and uh, Macron's equivalent as well as he, because he's a good friend. She's brilliant at what she does. So we would always stay in there. And then we'd leave them to have their, they'd bring in the press and then, um, then we'd leave them for a bit for, for bilat talks. And then we would join in about the last five minutes again. And, you know, he, yeah, there was yeah. a lot of that going. He was very aware. And not just with Boris, but I remember at the G7, he was all over Biden. He'd spotted him, vroom, beeline for him. And it's all about that l- looking out to the French people. Like, I'm in control. Like, I'm with the world leaders. I'm in. And there's a very, very good documentary on um, the BBC. I don't know if it's still on the iPlayer about the EU days and about Cameron's negotiations. And they interview Sarkozy. And he's the only world leader I've ever heard talk about it. And he talks about specifically how he had to draw um, Merkel in early before a summit was due to start, somewhere down and on the coast, somewhere in France. I can't remember exactly where, but anyway. He had to bring her in early before the rest of the world leaders come in because the, the Euro was, it was on its knees. And none of them were meeting. They're all loggerheads. The French needed, obviously, the Germans to take part. He said, so I called her in. We had this meeting. We'd done, a, we'd done what we needed to do. We agreed on it. He said, and he had his official photographer. And this is what he said. He said, I then said, to him, come on, let's go for a walk along the seafront. And he, was, he said, I was all over. I had my hands on her. I was like this. I was like this. And I was taking things. And I was doing this. And he said, the pictures went everywhere from, my, from the official photographer. He said, the French knew then I'd done it. Yeah, yeah. And he's the only one I've ever heard admit the power of having his photographer there. So and it was interesting. so interesting. It was, and it was, it was fascinating to watch. And the, the interview, because he said it, he said, I know, those images, everywhere. That was there. And, he, and, and it looked like he'd won. Yeah. Um, yeah, another famous one of that is like when Trump's got all the G7 leaders like looking at him with his arms crossed oh. as well. I know he didn't say it. Well, no, that was done by... Um, the German uh, official photographer, uh, I forget his name, Jesko, I think, I'm friend, good friends as well. And um, we're all friends, we're all the old, even the ex and the present yeah. official photographers. So we, we're all a bit of a club, really. And But you're all, you, but you're all I mean, it is amazing when you look at, like, particularly outside number 10, right? Having been there a few times now, yeah. that bank of photographers, the wall of photographers yeah. every time gets bigger and bigger and bigger, yeah. right? And there must be a bit of, like, elbows about trying to get the best shot and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was quite fortunate because I was obviously on the official side. So yeah. I would know, I, I mean, I gave up standing outside there when I crossed the line, as it were. And, um, and boy, didn't I know it. Um, as, as, as that, I, that was just short of photographers throwing cabbages and tomatoes at me. <laughs> um, uh, and probably to this day, still want to. Um, but, so, the officials, we were always very lucky because we had more time in the rooms. Um, we didn't stress too much when they let the travelling press come with us because we knew we'd either go in at the end or at the beginning. Plus, we were all in, we're all in, in, a, in a, you know, we're all mates together, officials, so we'd always be looking after each other one way yeah. or the other, making sure that we were allowed in when their world leader was, you know, so if it was Biden's bilat to us, yeah. I would team up with Adam over at the White House and he'd be like, yeah, look, don't worry, just follow me and we're in. And we're likewise, just... if they come to number 10, be like, look, Chill, Sit with me and I'll show yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> and we needed that. You do need that. Uh, um, and also, you can't talk about your job to anyone. Yeah. As a photographer, in being in a room, like, a lot of the time you're on the you're in the room with the prime minister on your own while he's on the phone to uh, you know president of the Ukraine or to Putin. You you can't just go out into the street and go, oh, you know, what you've been up to, lads. Oh, yeah, well, but you know, you know, it's it's a bit tough in there at the moment. But when you're with the officials, not that we ever discuss what's happened on the phone, but you can have a bit of a, 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 a trustworthy conversation. What was um, Obama like's photographer? Uh, he was all right. He was really cool. Yeah, and 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 he, Pete Souza, who was his official photographer, he was um, he he had a very good eye, and also with that eye, he had a very good subject, um, and uh, not obviously. He had um, Obama and um, I had Boris. Yeah. <laughs> so it's slightly you know, different. So you can set out in your mindset what you want to achieve from when you walk into number 10 to when you leave. But you definitely get um, 
thrown off course, but Obama was very cool. Like if you went into the White House, he was very friendly. And as yeah. he, it was when he came over here, I remember doing him and him and Cameron playing golf um, together one one Saturday afternoon. And yeah, and you know, he's very relaxed within himself. And you need that as a photographer. And, yeah. and sometimes half your battle is making that subject be comfortable in their self. And and Cameron and Boris were like that. Yeah, and Rishi in a, in a Rishi in a way, it, it, you know I, the stuff that I did I did a lot with him as Chancellor and when he um, Prime Minister and even politically today today, um, it's almost when they see you because you're an old face that they they do sort of drop a bit and like it's okay yeah, you know, it. it's fine you know, um, and as I say I quite often would send them pictures and but also just for a memento as well you know yeah right because they're. Yeah, busy as well right yeah. now. Not... And also time just moves so quickly that they forget that they're there and they've got nothing to look back on. So it's, that's another important reason for it. I mean, look at your dad, the picture we were just talking about. Yeah, yeah. 2012, so what, 13, um, 11 years ago. And yeah, there we yeah. are, And there we are still talking about it now. And that, when I was looking for that, I was finding some of the coalition talk stuff that he was involved in. The Shadow Cabinet, when Brown's resigning, oh, that's an yeah. amazing photo. Yeah, that is... which I found last night as well, yeah. looking for it. I was like, oh, God, I remember that portcullis house. Is he going to resign? Is he... That's it, yeah. Now, you don't need to see their faces. And, um, and Brown is very small in the frame. But they're... And also, look at the mood, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, 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 he's resigning. And they, they're, they're sort of halfway to number 10 now, this lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you wouldn't think it. It's, yeah, it's a very interesting and that's uh, that was May 2010, so, so it was a fair few years ago. Um, <laughs> talking about my dad quite a lot, but we, did you take the one of it was on the day of the general election in 2010, and it was a picture of uh, I think it was at Whitney in Oxfordshire because they were planning the cabinet and whatever, and it was on the election day itself, and there was Cameron Haig and Osborne and my dad, and the, on the front page of the Times it said. David Cameron, George Osborne, and William Hague sit down, and an unknown aide looks on because they didn't know who my dad was. I might have been, a barn that they borrowed a barn or something. If yeah, I yeah. Rightly. I can't remember where it was. Um, it's a funny one. I think I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not your fault. That's no, no, that was a, that was a sub, that's sub editor's a, fault. <laughs> that's another funny yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the um, talk, talk to us about the difference between politicians and the the kind of royal family in terms of politics is so much about not knowing where the day is going to go and the kind of like the sort of split second moments of resigning etc but the royal family must be quite a, I mean obviously it's sort of similar institutions but just what are the differences that you've noticed um well before I went into number 10 in 2019 that was what I was mostly photographing was I was, I was mostly a royal photographer rather than political um, and I got lured back in into the, the into election campaign in December um and the big difference is, yeah, it's very structured. Um, you know roughly where and when you're going to be. And you have more, there are more what you'd want to class as fixed point positions so that they would, you know, walk okay. a line and come to you rather than uh, the politics side of things where it's sort of a bit sort of not quite so headless chicken side of things. But yeah, it, yeah, it's but a bit it's more still... fluid. But then it has to be like that for the royal family compared to the politicians because... Um, the politicians are out there campaigning, you know. Yeah, yeah, good so yeah. They've got to meet the voters and and who they need to, you know, to, uh, you know, or hand out the leaflets, etc. That they need to do. So there's where the uh, royal family, um, from from any any member of the household, it's very, um, it's calmer. Yeah, it's more structured, um, and, and from our eyes as photographers, it's what we would call cleaner because there's yeah. not the commotion around it. So um, you you tend to get a lot more. Cleaner, usable uh, images uh, uh, than than you would do from the politics side. Um, it's one end of the spectrum to the other. Going from that to then with Boris, when none of it was structured. <laughs> you know, it, was, it, it doesn't matter if there was a structure. But That's I'm, not a staffing thing. It was structured, but it didn't matter because the staffing, the structure didn't actually take place a lot. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I I, I remember just before um, William and Kate were married a com like a throwaway comment in in one of the newspapers saying that you know Kate will be the most photographed woman of the 21st century and it kind of really stuck with me because I thought that's not going to be true and then I thought actually it is because 
actresses and famous people and other walks of life, politicians, they all come and go. Mm. But the royal family, like actually, she is going to be in that you know, sort yeah, of position yeah. for 70 years. That is the most of the 21st century. I was just quite struck by it. You know, there's a lot of... It's immense uh, pressure. Yeah, right. Because, you know, it means that if you are on a fishing engagement, therefore you are going to be photographed from start to finish. Um uh, and in some in, in this country, we don't actually see the images that aren't on official engagements because because uh, you know quite rightly so the press don't publish them. Um, but there's obviously probably images of uh, as well that are taken that we don't see of yeah. their private you know movements and stuff like that of you know whatever you know. Um, but it's 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 a huge demand that that they you know that they have to live up to really. Yeah. It's 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 um. I was trying to think if there's more of us or less of uh, photographers. I think there's probably when you when you mentioned about Downing Street, there's that wall. There's an old picture. Um, I think when sort of Blair, when Blair got in, and it's even busier than than what you're referring okay. to. Okay. Because obviously there's a lot more photographers there, a lot more staff photographers on newspapers. Yeah. Um, uh, now there seems to be more freelancers than anything else. So and and to be fair. As a revenue, there's not a huge amount of money in politics for photographers, unless you're in a finan you know financially. There's not you know you don't sell. Well, yeah, freelancers don't sell big money uh, for for a picture Freddy. of a prime minister because all the papers and the national wires and all that will be doing it anyway. How do the business and economics of kind of photography work in the modern age? Um, it's got is that is the that is the sort of problem because we all go into this going to want to take pictures and be photographers and stuff, and then all of a sudden, as you as you grow bigger and things get bigger and you get in more demand, that other side of life starts taking you over. Just as you know, like the invoicing and the, the chasing and the commissioning. So, yeah. um, and digital has moved on so much that it's also pushed the price down. Yeah. So you're constantly, and you know, even to this day, people will ask me for a quote to do a shoot or do a full day or whatever and you'll give them x y and z and they'll go well I've got a phone jack the down the road can do it for i don't know 50 percent cheaper than whatever like you go okay brilliant okay well that's the price you know i've worked 30 odd years that's that's yeah. my price sort of thing anyway they go off and use jack and then uh, about yeah you know a month six weeks later they come back with another job and you'll go well what about Jack down the road? And then they quite often say, well, we'd quite like his feet in or his head in on this shoot. You know, there's a lot of, yeah. you know, it used to be the cowboy plumbers and stuff like that. Yeah. The cowboy builders, sorry. It's a bit, it can be a bit like that. Cowboy um, photographers. Yeah. They're, yeah, they've picked it up and think they can do it and things like that. And half the thing with the job really is actually getting on with the people. Yeah. And this is what annoyed me about my job is a lot of people just thought that, that the prime ministers had gone out into number 10, into the street, and gone, oh, we need a photographer, you know, put your hands up if you fancy it. And I happen to be the one that they picked. It's not the case, you know, I've worked with these guys when they're in opposition. I mean, Boris's was a 13-year interview. I've been with him for 13 years, right? And, um, you know, and Cameron, uh, well, 2005 he got in, didn't he? Yeah. So five years prior to that, before he got in, you know, pounding the streets, doing the mileage going all odds out at different hours and stuff like that. And it's, you know, you, they, you get to know the people and, and that's, that's part of the process and the thing. And there was, a, for my role, there was a lot, a lot of, um, anger's not the right word, but there was a lot of anti it, you know? Yeah. And I just, and there was a lot of people. Well, you'd sort of t turn poacher, turn gamekeeper yeah, or whatever yeah, way you want yeah, to phrase yeah. it, right? And my wages, the amount that the, the government paid me became obviously, as it does, it became public. And I had a lot of photographers moaning and, 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 and uh, you know, and, and, and sort of belittling it and, and complaining about it, about their money. And I was like, why are you doing this? You're devaluing yeah, yeah, what well, your well. actual product is. Why are you moaning why I'm paid? You should be going, you know, the old Britain Not paid enough. Exactly, Bruce Forsyth, more, more, <laughs> higher, higher, higher. And I was like, you're, 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 it's insane. Yeah, yeah. Why are you moaning about what I'm paid really when you're a photographer? You know, oh, yeah. That's like me going, I'll pay you 20 and you'll go, no, I'll have 10. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you're like, it just, just didn't make business sense. And that, it, the, I do think, and I, I don't wish to be harsh on photographers one little bit, but there is that element of um, you have to be business savvy now. You have to be. And for anyone coming into the game, don't think it's as lovely as just taking pictures. You know, it's, it's a job. Um, 
digital has changed it. A lot of people think, well, you've only got to take a few pictures. Yeah. yeah that's fine. You go, fine, we'll just go and get someone that wants to come and take a picture. So for me, as I, just, as I said, you know, I have a total infrastructure now. If I can't shoot it, I've got other photographers that, are, uh, that will subcontract into me or whatever, or, or contract in. Um, I, I have an editor permanently. We distribute stuff to the papers. Um, we will be editing live on the spot, so it's pretty much live as photography can be. We'll store it on servers so you keep an archive. The whole point of having photography is to keep the archive and the legacy. Um, and, you know, and it's not just, oh, Jack turns out and gives me a CD. You know. <laughs> and then that really does annoy me in, in this world. Poor Jack Blake. Oh, no, oh, no, poor Jack. Jack but how many photos do you reckon you took? Because this is, it's, it's always interesting hearing about the other parts of people's job because it is just the part we see, the photography side of it. But in 13 years, I mean, you must have taken yeah. tens of thousands of pictures. I have. And it's and things like when you said, like, dig a few out, you sort of did it in Desert Island Disc style of eight pictures. Yeah. Was, that was really tough. Because it's really hard to do. And then I started, because you mentioned your dad, yeah, again, we mentioned dad, but you mentioned that, and I thought, right, that's in, the t that's in 2010, let me have a look. For and I start looking through, and I, I then get lost. Yeah. Because I start going down memory lane yeah. and things like that. But there's, it, was a, it was a lot. But towards what the do you end... Do? do you have it all on external hard drives? A lot of it's on, a lot of it is uh, on drives, um, as in what we would call the overs of the stuff that we haven't used and stuff like that. So we try and keep everything that we shoot. Yeah, um, but a lot of it is archived away on servers that we've had built. That you know, you you basically got to have your own filing cabinet. Yeah, because and also in today's day and age, um, people have lost pictures and then they want pictures because they've lost it or they've lost the yeah, link yeah, or they've yeah, done yeah, this yeah. and that and the other. So I can access it on my phone and send them pictures and stuff like that. Um, uh, but it, it's very hard to play catch up all the time. Which and and this is what I would say to anyone seriously: if you start expanding and you into the photography world and you'll start doing well, the most sound investment you could probably buy into is to get yourself a freelance editor. Right. Because what, what you'll find, it for me, and don't get me wrong, the, the chap's name's Pete McLean, and, and he, he, he's, he's, he's a lovely guy. He's, he's, he's patient. Um, and I, I, as being photographer, he's a photographer, obviously I'm a photographer, we will have a little bit of a rant over a picture. I'll be like, no, no, that's not, you've not cropped it right, you've not done this right. It's very much rugby orientated on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of, end of the shoot, end of the job, like, he'll be like, oh, look, yeah, you had a bit of a moment, but we got there in the end sort of thing. And that's what you need. You need, one, you need another pair of eyes on it. Two, you need someone to keep you level. And thirdly, he can be editing something while I'm moving on to another shoot. So if I didn't have him, I would then be editing the next day and I'll be cutting into my time and not shooting the next day. So you're, so in some ways, I would tell it to any young photographer now, work towards having an editor. Oh, yes, sir. What, and what, what advice do you give to people starting out? Because it is one of these jobs that, like you say, barriers to entry have come down a lot in the last 20 years in terms of you don't need, you know, everyone walks around now with quite a high quality camera. That's not to say that anyone can be a photographer by any stretch of the imagination, but it means more people are trying it every day in their lives and think, oh, I might be able to do a bit more of this. What advice would you give to aspiring photographers? If you're trying to get into the editorial field, um, it is quite hard. It, it, it's one of those jobs, one of those creative jobs, just you know, say like in the music industry, fashion industry, etc. Yeah. Um, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep tapping on that door. Um, I'm afraid to say... In today's world, there aren't many staff photographers' jobs left. Yeah. So you've got to have that mentality um, of being able to work for yourself. That means, you know, you do a lot of juggling. All of a sudden, there's no shoots. And all of a sudden, there's like, uh, you know, you've got five-day shoots on. All of a sudden, they want them all at the same time. All the buses yeah. coming on. And you've got to juggle that. Um, and as you expand, as your name gets bigger, the demand gets bigger... People, if you can't do it, they don't think, well, I'm going to wait. They don't then go somewhere yeah, else. So you, else. you really, you know, some days you'll be like, well, why haven't, like, uh, why haven't I got anything on this week? And then next week it goes goes totally the other way. And you're like, ah. So the, the balance of it all. And also the, to be, you know, you've got to be sort of quite mentally strong about it or not beat yourself up um, and just keep going and keep knocking on the doors and, and keep taking... One thing I haven't done of late and for a long time is take pictures for me. Yeah. I just haven't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just impossible. 
Um, and I've still got loads of editing to do now of, of jobs and things. Even even with an editor, I'm still having to. I still edit a few bits and pieces that I want to edit, or some of the political stuff anyway. Yeah, that's been left over. Um, and how do you? How did you get into it all? I was very fortunate. My dad was into photography, so we had a dark room at home. And when I was about seven, he bought me a proper SLR camera. And we had, I was, as I said, fortunate to have a dark room. So I would quite often develop films and mess about uh, in there. And then he wasn't a photographer. He was, funny enough, an optician. But he, he was the one that he sort of, I remember, yeah, seven years old, handed me the, the SLR camera, you know, you take the lenses off the front and film and everything. And, um, and away I went. And then I got into photography college before I left school, which was, was a little bit of an issue now looking back because I sort of then took the foot off the old accelerator and thought, well, I'm going to go and do what I want to do. I'm going to be a photographer. And um, sort of perhaps the other side of school um, took a little bit of a wayward thing. And, and I didn't... And I went to photography college and then... Um, I originally wanted to be an architectural photographer, believe it or not, when I was at college. And then I got a job um, freelancing on the Cambridge Evening News. That's where I'm from, Cambridge. Yeah. And I got a job on the Cambridge Evening News freelancing. Someone left, I then got a staff job. Then I wanted to come to London and um, the picture editor of The Sun had a Cambridge connection. So he felt that it was, you know, and it just clicked. There's a lot of things in, in this job where one being in the right place at the right time just for the photograph, but also for other things, you know, um, other openings of people that want to help. And there are a lot of people out there that want to help um, in the job. Um, it has changed, unfortunately, the money isn't there. Big, big companies. Big agencies have driven the price down. Yeah, I'm very fortunate that my archive, no one else has. Yeah, but if you're, if and will you make stuff off royalties for that then? And such you do like? make bits and pieces. Yeah, you do make bits and pieces. But we're not talking like people think. You know, we're not talking fortunes like you know. I haven't got a string of speedboats parked up outside the front. That it's not that. It's what people do think. They think, oh yeah, here we go. You know, yeah. Um, here's another extension on the house. As uh, the likes of Ben Gascoigne and Declan Lyons used to joke about, oh, here he comes, you know. Yeah, I saw a picture of yours the other day. What what leg of the house is that sort of thing? You know, there's all those jokes. But the money, the money's not there for that. But the the beauty of me is, if people come to me and want to buy a picture, it isn't anywhere else. And then you give them a price, and they go, well, X, Y, and Z doesn't charge me for that. And you go, well, that's funny, isn't it? Because X, Y, and Z don't have it. Because yeah. I was the only one in the room. So if you want it, it's that. there's a lot of that. And I think for freelancers, bearing that in mind, that you've got to maintain your ground, learn how to haggle a bit and and not get deflated and just keep going, keep going. It's a very self-motivated job. You yeah. Know? Like you just said about the cabinet. Why do you do cabinet every week? You're right. You know, you've got to have a bit of motivation to go, right, here we go. A bit of interest. Cabinet yeah. members are going to sit around the table again. And was it hard to sort of... And how do you kind of keep the distance I mean it's clear that you kind of got on with Boris and the team there and so on like in those days when everyone was resigning and the government was collapsing in on around him do you feel any kind of emotion it's very it's it's funny you should mention that because I I specifically remember day, going back to the days when Cameron was leaving 2015 um, no sorry 26 16 he left didn't mm. he 2016 sorry 15 he won I remember him writing he's, he's, uh, he thought he was he thought he'd lost his seat in 2015 he thought he'd lost his that's amazing his, yeah. picture you've got of that yeah that when he was writing his resignation speech yeah yeah with Kate Ford, 20, uh, 2015 and this goes back to what we were talking about earlier on I just never know where the day's going to go yeah. and there he is at 7, 8 o'clock at night in his um, in his back garden in, in Oxfordshire writing his speech and then they all went inside and it was just me and him and he goes oh look Parsons, you know, we've had a ball, we, you know, we've done it, but it is coming to an end, it's coming. And I was like, well, you know. And then two hours later, or, or it might have been three hours later, I think it was at 7.15 or something like that, that is literally him writing it. Um, and they're all getting it together, and you can see a few of them are sort of quite sort of sober and upset about it. Um, and then three hours, that was quarter past seven, so by 10 o'clock the exit polls come out, and there's pictures of him jumping around, he's lounging, Dean, getting yeah. the majority and he's over, and then, what, a year later, into 2016, there I am doing him surrounded in his box, Yeah. Um, his kids are writing notes for Theresa May, he goes out, 
literally 30 minutes later, so they're clapping him out and there's tears and everything, blah, blah, blah. You're photographing him going out. Because I was obviously um, with uh, Katie and the rest of them for Theresa May, 30 minutes later, I'm doing Theresa May coming in and everyone's clapping but smiling. Yeah. Same people. It's extraordinary, you know, isn't it? That, that, like, that you, change you're flicking the You're flicking the light switch, right, okay. And then you go into cabinet reshuffle. As for Boris, Boris was... Um, uh, just over a year ago now, in July, we we it'd been going on for some days around the sort of fourth, fifth, and sixth, I think it was. And on the we'd been holding on, he'd been holding on, and on the Wednesday night uh, in the study, he said, "Look, we're all a bit tired. It's time, it's time to call it a day. And we'll be, we'll be all right, holding on, sort of thing." Thursday, he said, "Let's regroup here tomorrow, at eight thirty, whatever." In the study, I get up there, at eight. He, he got in before me, and. Um, and, the, and as I got in there, they locked the door. I was like, oh, right. I was like, right. started photographing what was going on because there was a meeting around the round table. And um, there we are, locked in the study. I think it's all a bit strange. And then I start hearing the conversation. So, are you sure you want to do this outside the front, or are you think of another venue, or do you want to do this? And I was thinking, oh, right, it's, it's, it's done. Yeah. And that was it. And you, and I, like you just because not only that, you you've got one of the best photography jobs in the in the country. You're photographing all this, yeah. You're up there with, you know, like you say, the, the French leaders, the, the US leaders. You know, you're in this, you're in this elite gang of yeah, photographers, yeah. Um, and it, and it, woof, you know, and so, all you hear is, "Do you want to do this?" And I, and you know, it's over, done, and but you've got to keep going. This is just now you're going to start again because you've got these days. He's writing his resignation speech. Um, he's going to go and do his speech. He's going to come in. You know, there's, the whole day is now twelve hours, fifteen hours long. Yeah, yeah. And it's eight o'clock in the morning. And we're locked in a room because it was dead secret. There's only about ten people in there. Uh, and and you got to, you know, they're obviously all looking sort of devastated. But you got to keep going. And then he goes and makes his speech and comes into his office. And there's a lot of tears from various, you know, um, the people that worked for him. And you're still photographing. Knowing you're out of a job as well. I mean, I, I was, I was I lucky. I was that. lucky. Yeah. I was lucky because I stayed with Liz, um, but I wasn't. I was one of the few. <laughs> I was one of the few out of fifty of. I think fifty odd spad six of us yeah, survived. Yeah. Um, but at that time, I didn't know that because we didn't know Liz was going to win. You know. Yeah. So, uh, so at that time, you're on borrowed time. Put it that way. And let's flip to the side. One of the most iconic images that's been taken, of course, is the. Uh, of one where he finds out his exit poll result when he's in number ten with Cam yeah. as well. What was what was that like? Because that's a real like God. You've got to get that moment. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, it's almost like in, if your camera's yeah, on the yeah, desk, yeah, yeah. you've missed you, it. Yeah, exactly. And you're not. And the same with Cameron and, and Dean. You know that one there. And that picture has been used so many, so many times um, around the world. Um, and it, 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 like you say, it's. I guess it's the equivalent of us. From a sports tour for like with a World Cup goal or something, the yes. winning World yeah, Cup yeah, goal, yeah, you know, it's, 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 they sit there. Sport photographers, they have a. You, I used to do a bit of sport myself years ago on on various agencies, but you really do have to predict that because yeah. the ball is, you know, going all over the shop. Um, with that, at least you can hear in the background the telly's on, blah blah blah. This is coming out, and the result is, and then and then it goes. But that resorts back to that resorts back to what we're talking about coming through the door there's a lot of technical things that can go wrong yes there. with that shot right right i mean the cameras are sophisticated but at the end of the day they are still a box with a hole in it <laughs> right and it's you and everything else. and you've got to tell that box what's going on because i never use my stuff on auto or anything it's yeah. all manual i almost use it like a film camera i i, I never let it tell me what's going on because yeah. it spooks the life out of me as where well. i can now go right x y and z here we go and and you get, you know, I get about three or four lives because your flashes and the flashes are going off and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was used as a wrap around the Sunday Times and and, and and constantly thing. But that is minutes when he has just realised that he's he's just changed his political history. Yeah, with the majority. Um, and you're the only one there, so you can't say to anyone else. Oh, kind of, yeah, that yeah, went a little bit wrong, it. like. He's and just got to do that. Yeah. And unfortunately, you, you say this about the, the phones now, they don't work in our favour either because you can say, well, it didn't really, nothing really happened. Oh, well, that's funny because um, we've got this phone picture. Yeah. 
And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you might have had a little bit of a celebration, but nothing much. Yeah. Well, it didn't look like it on that phone picture. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's where before, before phones. And you went, no, I didn't really do anything. Just sat there, nodded. Like, <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you were sort of slightly snookered. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. So you, in some ways, the pressure is more now? Yeah, because every, yeah. And it comes back to that thing of everyone thinks they can do it, right? And oh. Jack down the road as well can sort of do it, but there's, there's a lot else going on there. Um, I guess what, we refer to Jack Doyle because he always used to say to me, I'll just take a picture past <laughs> so, Me and Jack Doyle have known each other for years. It was hilarious when he became comms director because he used to write my captions at PA. <laughs> right, when yeah. I was at PA, he was a junior reporter and he used to, they used to do stints on different desks and he was on the picture desk once and he had to write my captions and photographers are not known for that that use of the English language and uh, he used to write it and then he came comms director I said oh I walked into his office and I said uh, normal rules yeah you're going to write the captions for me <laughs> <laughs> and then he used to spur off like oh can you do this can you do that I said oi just remember just remember you're a caption writer right, mate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> amazing love Jack to bits he's um, a good lad he really is good I mean, this, this, this um, picture I wanted to ask about this because this is yeah, recent, S recent. Yeah, 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 this is... Um, um, yeah, it's just up on the campaign that we've done. But it was, uh, I mean, that, yeah, again, you know... That's an amazing right shot place, of those colours, right? Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, the war world lends itself to it and the reaction and, and just the way that that is framed. Um, and, and, and yet again, you know, there were three of us there, um, three photographers. I, I decided to keep the net in because, to me, that's what you needed in it. And uh, yeah. the pictures that I've seen, other pictures I've seen, the net wasn't... I don't... They just centred in on the main subject and you're a bit like I don't understand that thinking but still um, it, and obviously it's more the reaction of the the, the uh, actual members of their team if you see the team yes, as it yeah, were the, yeah, the, the, yeah. the basketball team it's more their reaction that draws you in um, so where was that taken? Uh, Sheffield that was taken yeah right okay. and it was um, it was just a split moment and, and it, that's one of those things where you're like right okay this could go either way yeah yeah um uh, and you and you got and you got to be honest, uh, but people might say, "Oh, well, that's easy now. Modern cameras, you can do this." Not at all. In some ways, it's harder because the, the cameras are focusing and they're doing all this. You you lock it on, as it were. It's all in some ways, it's like some sort of like um, control mission thing inside your inside your viewfinder in the eyes and stuff. But because they're so technical, they can they fl they can flicker amongst. They're so sensitive on subjects that they go in and out of focus constantly, and they move this, that, and the other. So could have quite easily been on focused on on the background crowd than it was on on the main subjects there. Yeah. So you've got to you 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 you've got to sort of tell it what to do, you know, and take control of it. Otherwise, so people think, oh, these modern cameras, they can do what they want. And I'd say that to anyone that's trying to come into the industry, don't be fooled by oh, the thing? camera and the kit. You know, all the gear but no idea. It, it, that, that's a very <laughs> good theory for what we do. Always resort back to box with a hole in it. There was one. That no, I want the Queen's funeral. Yeah, Just, so that was one of the ones you picked as well. That we, I was saying simply because that's the, yeah. So the, the reason I picked that simply because um, I remember doing the Queen Mother's funeral. Yeah, and then obviously um, X amount of years later, you're doing the Queen, and and that's when you start realizing just what you have done in the job. You know that you're now starting to see various events. So worked for. Personally, for four prime ministers, the Queen Mother's funeral, the Queen's funeral, royal weddings, mm. royal births, um, coalition talks, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony Blair coming in, you know, and you, you start thinking of these events, you know. Are you going to do um, an exhibition or something? At some stage? Uh, Is that a way to make? Uh, yeah, I'd like. I've, 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 I've sort of got a book deal, and I'm just trying to work out um, how to, how to. You know, get it funded correctly and get it right. I mean, my my daughter's pretty uh, uh, severely ill at the moment, and um, she's got really such bad um, uh, severe epilepsy on the back of her being having cancer. And I'd like to do one to raise money for children with epilepsy or children with cancer. One or maybe tighten with both because um, you know the, the, it's it's hard with with the epilepsy because with the cancer they know how to fix if, if it's the right sort they know how to fix it yeah with epilepsy we're still a long way behind and she, i think she's at the moment they're saying she's sort of like the only one in the uk with this type of epilepsy and it's severe it really is severe and there's about 18 in the world so uh, you know just uh, we did it before with we had an auction when she had cancer we raised some money for it years ago so 
if anything, I'll do it for that. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. But I've just got to, I've got to get it off the ground a bit more. And I'm sort of looking for various ways of uh, sort of basically financial backing for it to happen, okay. really. Um, and that, that's one one way of doing it. But my main incentive here to give it into the into the charity or whatever as they're doing it. But but yeah, it's uh, it's been. I mean, look, it's been really interesting doing the whole thing that I've done. How have you found talking about it? Because you've gone, you've done, you've done a bit lately, right? Yeah. You've done Matt Chorley, Sophie Ridge, Well, I've spent 13, jobs. Th- 13 years, Jimmy's Jobs, yeah. Um, I've spent 13 years of not really talking about it. Yeah. For and that being reason. Behind the, yeah, yeah. Being, yeah. For that reason is because you've sort of taken on, and I'm not going to give away any trade secrets. It's not my job to do that, and I don't want to do that. But... Um, it's been quite good talking about it, like time to reflect on it and yeah. what I have done, you know, Brexit to, Brexit itself, Remain and Brexit campaign, um, uh, God knows the amount of general elections, no to AV. Yeah, Remember yeah, that yeah, one? yeah, yeah, yeah. Drag that one out. Um, I'm trying to think of a few others that have gone along the mayor elections. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and oh God, was it four or five? I don't know. I think it worked out as about... It's either 13 or 15 major campaigns or something in a period wow. of time. And as you know, some of those campaigns are like six weeks long. Um, and and you've seen a lot. But, but, but look, you know, it's the most awarding, real, awarding thing about it is, is that there is now a photo department in number 10, regardless if I'm there or not. That wasn't there. It's there now. It's, you know, this is hopefully the civil servants that are there or the civil service, as it were, will keep that strong. It's, it's an important role now, I mean, more so than ever. Um, and to young photographers out there, go and find something that you do actually love doing and work at it and work hard at it and just bang on doors and doors and doors and doors. And, and you will get no's. You will get no, no. And I used to have it with the, I used to have it with the Conservative Party, with Cameron. No, you can't come into this meeting. You can't come into this meeting. And, and then you just keep chipping away, you keep chipping mm-hmm. away, you keep chipping away. And then, next thing I know, you're in number 10 and there's, you've been asked to go to meetings. <laughs> it's gone the other way. You're like, all right, really? Do you really want this one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to photograph all the stuff behind the scenes at, um, in COVID. Yeah. All that documentation, all the scientists briefing, um, the PMs and the health sec, uh, all the times when news was coming in, how bad things were going to be. You know, being that fly on the wall, being able to blend in, and not being told to, um, to, uh, you know, to to actually get out or or move on or only spend a minute doing it, was um, was was really impressive. And I, I always remember when new members of staff used to join, senior members of staff used to join pre- um, private office. I used to wander in the room and they'd go, oh, "What have you done now? What have you done?" I'll be like, no, 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 no. I just said uh, I'm here. <laughs> you know, like, You'll be going before yeah, me. Yeah. Oh, oh, right, right. So, and I'll be like, yeah. And like they're trying to fish you out sort of thing. I'd be like, well, you, you know, PM's not said anything. And it was always quite, and, and after a while they got it, but yeah. you can always remember the new people, you know, the higher end chief of staff's new people and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why it was always a joy when people were appointed that I'd known from previous backgrounds, whether it's politics or royalty or whatever. And, um, but yeah, it, and, and I also like doing it in all seriously, so that the people that work there had a memory of it as well. Not just yeah, PMs, yeah. you like yourself, you know, yeah, you're yeah. just talking about the doors and stuff like that. I'm bound to have a picture of you watching that speech on a television. I'm pretty sure I have. One you day, know, one day, you know, one day. I'll find, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, don't tell uh, other people you got it first. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's, yeah, a, there's yeah. a list. There is a list. It's a, a bad. But, but for young people, just keep going in photography. Going. It's a fantastic job. Um, you get to see and hear a lot, whether it's at top end of government, whether it's local newspapers, whether it's a project you're working on with a band that you like. It's a, it's a journey that you just do not know where you're going to end up. And it can be one that just opens up a hell of a lot of doors that, that you don't want to ever close, really. Brilliant. Andy Parsons, thank you very much. Jimmy, thank you, thank you. Thank you.